Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Chef's Platter uh, from the kitchens of the Fairview Hotel Upper Hill. Uh, we will be taking you through a beautiful seven course menu with seven different wines this evening to show you how to pair the wine and the food together. I'm joined by my lovely wife here, uh, who is a sommelier, who will be hosting uh, the cellar. Uh, the cellar is going to be talking about the wine and the wine pairings. Cellar is a, a new addition that will be taking you through the wines, the terroirs, and then lots of things. But my wife here is going to be uh, talking about it just now. So please, Jeanette, welcome Thank you. to this beautiful episode. Thank you. And I'm very happy, happy to be with you this evening. So we will show our viewers how to pair the wines and, and, the, and the food together. So please, what is a sommelier? Sommelier is, uh, is somebody who knows his wines, who knows where, uh, the, where the wines come from, which grape, how it's made, who made it, where it comes from, uh, which climate. So a sommelier is the one in the restaurant that should recommend you and be able to explain to you what you like and what you uh, don't like. So now, Jeanette, we have five continents, and five continents have their own wines. So how do you know where the wine is coming from, what kind of wine it is, what kind of grape are they, what is the terroir, and this kind of things? Normally, as a sommelier, when you work in a restaurant, you, have, uh, you work with different uh, um, importers, and they ought to know what they are selling. So together, you taste your wines, and that's how you make a selection. Of, uh, of your wine list and through the importer or nowadays through internet or directly from the from the domain you you are able to get all the information you need yeah no tonight like I said we will be working together my wife and I and we will show you uh, through every dish the ingredients that we choose uh, to pair with the wine that we choose also. This is very important because <clears throat> when you make a menu or you make a dish, you have different components, different uh, ingredients. Huh? So, and our job is to define those components or those ingredients and to define the wine, where it comes from and how, it, how it's gonna taste with the, the ingredients together. Huh? That's what we're gonna do. And then we will show you how to taste also how uh, Jeanette is going to show you how, uh, uh, what to see in a wine and how to taste the wine and how to taste the wine with the foods uh, so that it creates a, a harmony together. So uh, after the break, we will uh, start with the first, uh, the first uh, dish, which is going to be a terrine of uh, supreme of chicken and chicken liver. Uh, now, the chicken is of in itself a little bit sweet and huh? the chicken liver give it a little bit bitterness and then we're gonna give it a an orange zest uh, marmalade that is gonna be so the combination with chicken uh, breast chicken liver and orange is gonna create a beautiful harmony together but we need to find the wine that is gonna be uh, um, going together or Matching. taste matching together yes okay so I'll see you after the break thank you Welcome back to another episode of Chef's Platter. Uh, as I said, we are doing today a seven course menu with uh, seven different wines. Now we have chosen an estate in South Africa uh, called Vergelegen this evening. And I, my wife is gonna 
talk about the wine and about the combinations that we choose just now. Uh, let me introduce one of my chefs here at the Pango, which will make uh, the first course, which is the terrine of chicken breast, chicken liver, and then we choose a little sweetness and bitterness with it to give it a harmony together. So, uh, Tariq, uh, let's uh, start with uh, the terrine. And then uh, at the same time, uh, Jeanette is going to talk about the wine. And why did you choose this wine? Why did I choose this wine? Um, Vergelegen has a special spot in my heart since I'm in Kenya. Um, it's a very old estate. The, the estate is, is, is created by a Dutchman, Willem Adrianus van der Stelt, in 1700. And he had it, and that family had it in the possession uh, over a hundred years. And it's been uh, going every hundred years in other hands. Um, it's a, uh, this estate is in Stellenbosch and it's, um, his vineyards are around six and a half, ten kilometers, the nearest to the, to the water, to the coast. So Stellenbosch is really in the Gulf like that, which creates a beautiful terroir and it has not been unnoticed by, um, very, uh, famous winemakers and wine estates because Rothschild uh, bought this estate in 1987 um, and investigated exactly which soil and which microclimates they all have and they came to 21 different soils which means what's in the ground and studied exactly how to create a complete new vineyard. So in 1987, they created this new vineyard and even in 2000 already, they won the biggest prizes. So what did they do? They took everything out that was not from that region. So every tree that was not really from that region, which would naturally grow in that uh, environment, they took it out and they planted it back really the French and the Bordeaux, because Rothschild started with Lafitte Rothschild. It's a big, big uh, domain in the Bordeaux, one of the best wines in the world. Um, and they really make the wines as French as possible, which I really like. So um, very, very well-maintained vineyards, very, very well thought through and modern techniques in winemaking and excellent blends. That's what Vergelegen is all about. So what did I do? Um, chef made the menu and I looked at it and I looked at what uh, he and Schauke wanted to present to the guests tonight. And I looked at it and said, okay, what, what, what is the right order to, normally we start with whites and then the reds and now we even have a white between the reds. Um, and then I, I, I know these wines, so they are engraved in my mind. And then I think, okay, I know his kitchen. How is that going to match? So why did I put a Sauvignon Blanc with a terrine of chicken and chicken liver? Because normally Sauvignon Blanc is not that strong, but this Sauvignon Blanc is extraordinary and really is able to carry this uh, dish, I think, because we're going to taste it now. And if it's not fitting, we have to swap it around. So, so what I uh, did here is the combination, like I said, the uh, uh, the chicken terrin. We did some orange uh, jelly, orange marmalade, but I created also a beautiful harmony of. Um, of uh, 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 greens uh, that will be matching because that bitterness of the greens. Eh? It's, it's about sweetness, bitterness, and a little bit sweetness also from the, uh, the beetroots. Uh, we made a, a beautiful beetroot uh, uh, meringue and uh, some uh, different uh, vegetables with it, a cucumber and a, and a, a carrot. So now what we're gonna do is to 
make sure that the harmony between the wine and all the ingredients. Because, you know, if there is, like I said, if there is a rosemary in, in, a, um, in a dish and that rosemary is really coming out very, very heavy, this, it's, it's going to actually make the wine a little bit more, not, 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 not uh, how do you call it, uh, not present. Yeah, break it, break it out of balance. Yeah. Uh, what's really important in a dish is that nothing really stands out, that everything is coming together and the wine uh, is exactly the same story. It has to come together, it has to be in balance. This wine I just opened, it's a screw cap. And um, yeah, we're going to taste. Mm -hmm. if, if the wine is showing itself in its best way, the way we present it now, because I just opened the bottle and it could be that it's a little bit closed down, so you have to swing it a little bit and give it some oxygen and then the wine will present itself at its best. Uh, so, uh, would you please, Jeanette, uh, show our viewers uh, what is very important uh, when you just open a bottle of wine? Now, I've seen you doing this. What does it mean, doing this? And um, how do you taste your wine as of uh, when you buy it uh, so you can, you can uh, match it with your food? What is very important? Uh, what's important for me is that the temperature is the right temperature and you have the right glasses. I prefer bigger glasses above uh, small glasses, really small glasses. These are the right uh, uh, size. So what I'm doing now is that how can you test if a wine would be better if you decant it. And decanting, we do in a decanter, yes, which is there. Um, but if you just want to know, you don't have to pour the whole uh, bottle right away into the decanter. You can easily check if you just pour it over in a glass for three, four times, and then you have the same outcome as if you put a whole bottle into the decanter. So if you want to check, just take half a glass and then you know if the wine improves. So this is a decanter, but if you don't have it at home, don't worry. What uh, Jeanette is uh, showing now, you can just take two glasses and then uh, take actually a little bit, put a little bit air. Eh? This yeah. is what you want. Eh? So. You want, you know, uh, wine is a living thing. If you put a, a woman in a bottle for five years and you open it and say, come out, then she won't jump out like being all on makeup and everything. So maybe she's just a little bit, she was just asleep, very crampy. So she needs to have a little time to adjust and that's what we do now. I think this wine really, Vergelegen is, is an estate that um, produces their wines for the long term. So this Sauvignon Blanc will also be uh, beautiful in five, six years, and maybe in 10 years. So um, these wines need a little bit of air. They need a little bit of uh, a shake. So, so Jeanette, you're, you're talking about the years. Uh, how do you know uh, that wi the wine is ready to be uh, Drink to be. I think that's the uh, responsibility of the of the domain keepers of the winemaker because the winemaker he is in the process in the cellar, mm -hmm. and I think wines should be released for sale on the market when they're ready when to be drank. Okay. Yeah. And the, this uh, Vergelegen is 2015. Yeah. So you said about you can drink in 2025 because yeah. it's. It's yes. a robust wine, when it's, it's a beautiful well wine. When it's well kept, seven. Yes. Okay, so. Not in the sunshine. <coughs> Let's, so what we're uh, going to do now is to uh, taste the components that we have, the ingredients, the different ingredients, and taste the wine together. And then the thing is, the harmony is that the wine and the food are going to be in the same level. 
So, and sometimes even the food or the wine can make each other better. Huh? Sometimes the wine can make the food better and sometimes the, 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 the food can make the wine better. So this is what we are in um, looking at. So, so we're gonna do everything a little bit together. And because of the strength of this wine, and also the nice uh, fruity uh, uh, taste. Uh, also the bitterness, because Sauvignon Blanc has a, a bit of uh, grapefruit tint, a little bit of bitterness. I think this is going to be a good match, so I'm, I'm I hope. See, chef's life is very, very boring. Eh? You eat, you drink, never trust a skinny chef. Eh? Wine is coming a little bit. It's covering. No, but, um, it comes back. Let's have another taste. Also, temperature will be a big influence. Mm. Did you take the beetroot? No. Beautiful. The liver is... Um... It, um, the liver is matching, actually, the, the wine. Hmm? I want to try something So this is how we do it, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, sometimes, even if you choose a wine, and at the end, it doesn't match. So you have to find the solution. This is matching, but I think that Janet has another idea. So this is the Sauvignon Blanc Reserve, and this is from one vineyard. So one terroir, only from one plot, and maybe this will be a better match. Maybe we have to swap some things around. It's the same grape. So this is the Sauvignon Blanc and this is the Sauvignon Blanc Reserve. This what is the premium. difference? The premium comes from different vineyards mm -hmm. and they're all going, every uh, piece of uh, the vineyard, they um, vinificate it in one uh, tank. One tank. Uh, wow. Yes, and then in the end they taste, they taste, they taste and then they make the final blend. This is from one single vineyard. vineyard. Yes, so the, same the Schapenberg vineyard, and there's only six thousand bottles made of this wine. Let's try this. So, we're gonna try with the, the Sauvignon Blanc Reserve now, and then try to match. I think this is a better match. It's got more strength. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. The, the reserve is coming, you know, the liver, the chicken liver, with the with the Sauvignon Blanc premium was overwhelming. So
This has a better balance. And we also look at the different structures on the, on the plate because when everything is very soft and smooth, it will be a different feeling and a different um, acceptance with the, with the wine. So we always look at um, how you um, yeah, decorate your, your uh, plate, yeah. but thought through what has been put on the plate. With I like it a good reason, yeah. And you know, putting the ingredients together, huh? You have a plate and lots of chefs will think, I have this, this, this and this, and I put it back, uh, I put it uh, together, but before you know as a chef, there is too much on a plate. You don't want to have too much because then you have too much um, flavors that uh, could be not matching together. So you have to be very, very careful when you are making a menu or when you are making a dish, set up a dish together. So we, actually this one is, is earth, you know? Uh, the, the carrots, cucumbers, orange, all these microgreens, the chicken, the liver. So this is something that you put together which lots of organic, because all these uh, microgreens are organic. Um, the beetroot also. Uh, so it is very carefully choosing the ingredients together with thinking when you make a menu, thinking to the wine also. Yeah. Huh? Is that true? Uh, that's what we used to do I at our restaurant. All chefs, uh, I don't agree all chefs think about wines. It's more about they put a menu together. But if they put a menu together in the right mindset in a way that they want to have all the different flavors in their menu Absolutely. and yeah. with different products, it's for a sommelier a pleasure to work with. And it's also a big pleasure that you can discuss uh, with your chef uh, if he can maybe swap around one of, the, one of the dishes. Some chefs are absolutely against, it's my menu and you don't have anything to say, but to build up uh, towards something with wine, it's, it's always a pleasure to work with the chef that is able to to tweak around and we did all and, uh, we did also we did when we had our own restaurant uh, in Holland what we did also when when a guest will come and say uh, I want a wine a food pairing uh, we asked them actually we didn't ask them what they wanted to eat we asked them which wine do you want to drink and then when they choose the wine it's when we start cooking so it's actually the opposite of what other restaurants were doing. Eh? We, uh, the, uh, other restaurant will say, okay, choose your menu, well, and then we will choose the wine for you. No, we did the opposite, choose your wine, and then we will choose the food to prepare for you that is matching with the, with the, with the wine. So we have talked about I think the... We, the we, know. Eh? Eh? we have talked about the wines, we have talked about the ingredients, uh, we actually uh, tasted two wines, a Sauvignon Blanc, uh, a, a, pre, a premium and then a reserve. And then I am totally uh, sure that the reserve is going to be much better, is actually a much better match. than. Uh, so we're going to swap a little bit uh, the menu. And that's exactly what you need to do. Taste, when you have people at home and you want to do a, a wine pairing with them at home and you want to make something, please take the time to taste it before because sometimes it's just a little thing that is going to jump out of the menu or out of the ingredients that will kill your wine. So, And that's what we just did now. Eh? So thank you very much and we will take you to the second uh, dish uh, uh, from the menu which is going to be a smoked tomato consomme. I will talk about what is a consomme and uh, we will scent it a little bit, we'll add a little bit fresh truffles with it just to give it a truffle and smoke flavor is a match, it's a beautiful match together. And we will pair it with a uh, 2014 uh, premium Chardonnay then. Yeah. So, uh, so stay fit with us and we will see you in a couple of minutes. Thank you very much and welcome.
Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the Chef's Platter. Uh, tonight's episode is uh, for the viewers that j uh, just join us. Uh, welcome to, and we're talking about wine and food pairing. Um, wine and food pairing is very, very important when you have friends or family at home, and you want to do uh, a, a dinner with three or four or five courses and you want to choose your wines that uh, match with your, with your food. So, Shanet, uh, uh, we, we will have now the second course, which is a smoked tomato consomme uh, with fresh truffles. And Shanet is going to take a talk about the wine. Why did she choose the, this wine? A Chardonnay, is it? Huh? Chardonnay, yeah. yes. We have here, we have the Chardonnay of uh, Vergelegen. Uh, the wine is made very seriously. It comes from four different vineyards from uh, the Vergelegen estate itself. And uh, those are all vinificated separately and then um, put in oak barrel for fermentation uh, in 20% new oak and 80% second, third and fourth. And what does that say? You know, when you have uh, a barrel that can contain 225 liters of wine. Uh, they roast it inside, so they burn the, the wood. And it depends on which uh, barrel maker really makes it. And he has his own specific kind of treating those barrels and roasting those barrels. And as I saw in all those notes of Vergelegen, they, have, they also have three different um, manufacturers of wine barrels in France. So 20% goes in new oak, which gives more flavor of the barrel and the burning and the wood. And 80% goes into the second year, the third year and the fourth year. So altogether 60% of the wine is been um, oak aged and 40% is fermented in barrels. And what did they do? You know, if you, if you, want, if you press a wine, the yeasts that, that make uh, uh, sugar turn into alcohol are on the skins. So that's the wild yeast we call that. And they first let the wild yeast go on and on, which makes that the wine has really um, different flavors and different smells than a wine that has been um, uh, fermented with cultivated yeast because yeasts can uh, influence the taste of a wine. So you can make wine or you can create wine. And Vergelegen does uh, this process in the middle because uh, wild yeast can be very dangerous. It can stop fermenting and then you can throw away all your wine. So they try to control everything, um, which makes this uh, Chardonnay a lot of work and a lot of effort and the results are there. So also presented with a screw cap, which doesn't mean that it only has to be drink in this year because they say the life of this wine is like around eight years. So that means till 2022. So we're going to do the same what we did. We're going to look if this wine is, be, is presenting itself better when you decant it. So uh, once more, when if you if you have listened, uh, what uh, Jeanette is saying is uh, we uh, we choose this Chardonnay why because of the wood because of the smoked wood. Now it's very very important. We did also the sun dried tomatoes. We smoked them a little so that we give it the same background as this wine. Eh? Because you can when you taste the wine or you smell the wine. You can smell the barrel, the, 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 the smoked barrel in it. So earth, earth. Now I heard that it's very important where the wood barrels are coming from because even a lot of New World's wines, America, Australia, are importing barrels from France. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's about the wood, it's about the way they make the barrels mm -hmm. and also the American oak has more vanilla taste so if you have American oak wines, it will give more sweetness to the wine than the French 
uh, barrels, yeah. then the Hungarian barrels are also very famous, and they gave they give a typical spiciness to the wine, which is which is and and, and even you have estates where they grow their own trees in the same area in the same uh, environment as their vineyards are, so everything will combine beautifully together. So now we're going to taste the tomato consomme, like I said, a consomme is a, a tomato soup that we clarify actually. We add egg whites, we add uh, vegetables and we add uh, uh, minced meat to the, to the uh, tomato soup which is very thick and then it's a, it's, it's a, a science, um, well it's, it's, it's a science that that the the the, uh, the clear soup goes out, and then the and then the, all the, the 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 thickness of the soup comes up. So when we go it through the sieve, you will have a clear consomme. Uh, now with the clear consomme, we're gonna add a couple of ingredients to make it a little bit more interesting. Sun dried tomato consomme. We add sun dried tomatoes smoked. Huh? We add some raviolis made from some dried tomatoes and ricotta cheese. We're gonna add some microgreens and we're gonna add some fresh truffles. Why the fresh truffle? It's because we come back to the forest. You see? We are talking about woods, we are talking about smoked wood, we are talking about barrels, we are talking about tomatoes. This is all together. How can we enhance the, uh, the, the flavors is when you add some, um, uh, some uh, uh, truffle. The caviar is also made from truffles, so uh, all this Now, mm -hmm. so what's a truffle, chef? A truffle is a fungus that uh, we, um, it's, it's um, uh, champignon, yeah. uh, fungus, that is found in the Pyrenees, is found in the, uh, lots of French mountains, uh, a mushroom actually that lives under, uh, under the soil and then you need special trained dogs or pigs to find it because you cannot find it, you cannot smell it. You train some pigs and some, and some uh, there are farmers in the uh, uh, Perigord in, Fran in France or in Italy that train pigs or, or, or uh, dogs to smell uh, the truffle and then when the, the dogs will sit and they are telling the farmer there are some truffles here. So the farmers start digging and then they will find the truffles. Very, very expensive because of the uh, rarity of it, but a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flavor that adds to the ingredients. The dogs can be trained, but the pigs not, and the pigs will eat them. Well. So what's the consomme? I just said the consomme. We clear the consomme, yeah. So, uh, like I said, the, tom the consomme, tomato consomme, or any consomme, starts with the thick soup, and then we clarify the, the, the soup with with the uh, uh, vegetables, uh, minced meat, ice cubes, and uh, egg whites. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, I'm going to ask uh, maybe our director to come and taste this. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful tasting because this is what I call a real match. Real match. Yeah. So, Chef, when you have a vegetarian uh, soup, mm -hmm. you can't use the minced meat. What no, do you but use we that? don't. Then we just put a little bit more egg white. Mm -hmm. 
round. So what you want to do is you take a little bit of everything and the, um, and the ravioli, taste the wine without. So, and it's very important for you viewers to open, when you open a bottle of wine, taste it, taste the wine first, so you see how the wine tastes without the food. Taste the food. You see how the food tastes without the wine, and then you combine the two, and then you will see that is uh, the importance of wine and food pairing. Now, and if you need to know how a consomme is and how it's made, you are more than uh, welcome through uh, Brand Plus TV to get in touch with me. And then we will show you in our kitchen. And don't be shy, you can do it. We will show you in our kitchen through the Brand uh, Plus TV uh, to bring you here. And we'll show you in the kitchen how we do the, uh, uh, how we make the consomme. And any, actually, any dish from this uh, seven course menu. So you are more than welcome to get in touch with me. Uh, Chef. Jeanette, I think that it's, this is a beautiful match. I think too. I'm very yeah, happy. so thank you. Thank we you for showing. Like this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the next time is pan fried sweet bread. So the sweet bread comes from a pig, I heard. This one, yeah. but um, uh, because we couldn't find any sweet bread from the calf, uh, the veal, the veal. Young, veal. Uh, young veal. Yeah. So you know, the veal needs to be up to nine months, otherwise it disappears. Yeah. When a veal becomes, uh, becomes an adult, uh, the sweet bread disappears. So it's a fat that is actually, it's an organ that is in your neck and coming from here. And the heart. And from the heart to your neck, uh, to the neck, and uh, we, uh, made lots of research to get it but finally we could not get for the one from the fields but we got from a farmer in Naivasha some sweet bread from the pig and uh, that's what we're gonna do we're gonna pan fry them and uh, the the sauce is gonna be a reduction of port why port is when you you know is a sweet wine and there's lots of uh, you know natural sugar in it so when you do a reduction you are pushing a little bit the sweetness up mm -hmm. uh, and I think with the sweet bread is gonna be a beautiful uh, match okay. so let's uh, do the next mr. Salim let's do our next uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about Jeanette tell us a little bit about the uh, premium Shiraz why did you choose this wine why did I choose this wine um, the Shiraz is um is a very spicy grape and um, this one is, is, is quite dry and um, I'm just, yeah, I'm very curious how he holds the combination and um, this is the, the most insecure one but uh, you never know how it, uh, how it presents itself. The Shiraz is um, also made as, as a Shiraz from the Rhone Valley. Rhone Valley is, is the um, uh, district uh, terroir for Shiraz. And uh, Shiraz in the, in the south and Viognier in the north. They make the most beautiful wines from Viognier. And their Shiraz are always added a little bit of Viognier. And to my surprise, only Shiraz is mentioned on the label, but also added 11% of Viognier. So that's a white grape, very um, herbal, very flowery, uh, lots of uh, spirit. So it adds a little tick to the red wine. So I'm going to go around. And this is the Shiraz 2012 oak aged but i'm going to decant it straight away so uh oak age is the same what we were talking about the chardonnay uh, jeanette yes so also put in barrels fermentation in the barrels 
So what is the fermentation, Jeanette? Fermentation is the process that sugar uh, transforms into alcohol. And as long as there's no, when there's no sugar, uh, there's not going to be alcohol. And like you said, with the port wine, port, um, they let the port wines ferment till 6% alcohol, and then they add alcohol. And this, this process of fermentation stops at 15.5% alcohol. So uh, when you add 10% alcohol, the fermentation will stop, so sugar remains, so the sweetness remains. Very, very important. So, uh, <coughs> what we are putting here is uh, I made a uh, fresh artichoke uh, puree. Uh, why artichoke with sweet bread? Because I think it's one of the most beautiful combinations that you can have. Again, it's natural, it's the nature that talks, it's a lot of things that. Uh, that you combine together. I have uh, here a, a bell pepper or a, a red pepper, sweet pepper, uh, jelly, uh, carrots, uh, green beans, French green beans. It's very funny how we call this the French beans and they are made in beautiful Kenya. You know, when you buy it in Europe, you go to the, uh, to the, to the supermarkets and you tell them, can I have a pound of French beans. It doesn't have anything to do with France. These beautiful beans come from this beautiful country. Kenya is one of the biggest, biggest exports uh, country and producers country of the beans. And I have just a friend of mine that exports about 35 tons every week to the big markets, to uh, ranges in Paris. And it's just one farmer. So imagine how many tons a week goes from Kenya to, uh, to Europe. So this is the combination. Uh, the sauce, yeah. The sweet bread is here. Now, like I said, the sweet bread is pan fried. I love sweet so, uh, and then we're going to add some chips of artichokes just to give it to show people that why did we choose the uh, the artichoke to do uh, to go with the sweet bread uh, it's fresh uh, artichokes that we cleaned and then we uh, sliced on the machine and then we just uh, fry them okay a little bit salt and pepper and then port reduction. I can smell the alcohol also. Good. So, um, okay. Thank you, Salim. Okay. So, sweet breads, artichokes. <coughs> wow. So, the artichoke, I only taste the artichoke with the wines and it makes it a little bit going to the acidity side which is no problem because we're going to have the sweet bread which is pretty fat fatty and a sauce yeah, match. And this is a match. yes is it a match, a match. Mm. just with the sauce is a match already so the the most important thing with a with a wine and food pairing is the sauce how we work uh, together we always uh I'm just talking to my uh, 
to my chef, Salim. The sweet bread needs to be a little bit more crunchy. Yeah. Okay, so we need to do it in the, uh, the butter, clarified butter, and then really hot yeah. and then simmer. Okay? So, uh, that's what we call the Maillard effect. Maillard is uh, when you have... The best example for Maillard effect is French fries. If you eat French fries, they have to be crispy. As soon as they are fluffy and off, you don't like them anymore. So that's the Maillard effect. And there are studies that you... On every dish, there has to be something with the Maillard effect because people just love that. And that's how we explain the... Artichoke crisps on the plate, yeah. and the beetroot is a very essential bridge to the wine very with beautiful. the sweets. Yes, good. This Happy. is again. This is again. A beautiful match. So we are happy. We're happy. We are very very happy people now. Mm. So very important when you have your family or your loved ones or your friends come in and you are making a, a pairing. Please do taste it before because it doesn't matter how much the wine costs as long as your food and your wine pair together then you have a husband and a wife that are happy for the rest of their lives. Are we happy? Yes, I have an empty glass, wait. And what is also very important is that you find the products and the wines that are as natural as possible. Yeah. So, Salty. nature in a glass, nature on the plate will automatically match. Okay. Well prepared and well made. So Thank now, you. That's good. Very, very good. Yeah, you're a very good beautiful. cook. Thank you, honey. <laughs> a cook. A cook. A cook. A cook. <laughs> So now we're going to go to the uh, one, oh. two, three, four, uh, the fourth um, uh, dish, which is going to be a, a, a tarbot filet uh, from a Norway, from the North Sea. Uh, a very, very delicate fish, beautiful, beautiful fish. Uh, we import it as the only uh, hotel here in Nairobi, in Kenya. We import lots of fish from Norway uh, on ice. They come, um, if I call a morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, the next day I will have it, um, I will have it before 10 o'clock. So that's very, very important. Uh, tarbot, tarbot is a flat fish, beautiful, so a small uh, actually had and then it goes like this and then it comes so it's a flat fish uh, sweet and we're gonna serve it with a piece garden piece uh, uh, muslin a saffron burblo or a saffron butter but I am gonna show you something that you can do while you are at home we're gonna inject the, the fish with uh, beurre aromatique. Now, beurre aromatique is aromatic bu uh, butter. Uh, uh, the beurre aromatique, we call it, uh, because it has lots of aromas in it. Lots of aromas, what aromas? We have the soy in it, soy sauce. It's the best sauce, most easily made. Yeah, we have uh, clarified butter, we have the, uh, the soya sauce, we have onions in it, onions. we have a little bit garlic in it, we have uh, parsley, coriander, a little bit thyme. So it's really lots of aromas together to make the fish. Now, <clears throat> so this is the uh, beurre aromatique. And I am gonna inject it with, I'm gonna inject the fish. Science, eh? I am gonna inject the fish with this butter. Just, you see, you see the color changing? So 
So what am I doing is injecting the flavors into the fish. And then we're gonna poach the fish for just 30, 40 seconds now. And while we're poaching the, the fish, of course we are a restaurant, uh, uh, we, we uh, are a hotel with a restaurant, so we need to make it beautiful. We need to make the, the plates beautiful. So, because I am injecting herbs again, we're talking about natural uh, ingredients. So, the butter that we made, we smoked the hay that is in here, and we put the butter with the smoked hay, and we clarified the butter in the hay, and then we put it back uh, in a zeef, and so the butter has this earthy uh, smell and flavor, and we're gonna put some dried ice to make it beautiful, look beautiful. Tonight is, of course, our uh, night. And then we're gonna put plates on the top. And then we're gonna add some flavors to it. Jelly of beetroot. Garden peas. The garden peas, I'm gonna put it here because it's uh, uh, what is gonna give the, uh, the flavor. And we're just gonna decorate the uh, the plate with this is a beetroot but a red beetroot this is a carrot a purple carrot huh? you have to stick it yeah the so the a beetroot carrot uh, yeah uh, carrots and a little bit salt give me the fish please and the beurre, beurre blanc saffron beurre blanc I am gonna add just a little bit sea salt to this fish because it is a beautiful salt. So yes, yeah, yeah, we that. yes we poached so it a little bit because of no the saffron beurre blanc of course. Look at that color. And then the. I'm gonna add a little bit sea salt. Okay. That's it. No, we are gonna make a show out of this. So we're gonna add a little bit water to this and look at the magic coming. So we're gonna, add, yeah, oh, take this. So let's do this. Let's just add. Can I have some hot, hot water, please? So this is how we serve it at, uh, at the restaurant. To give it that smoky uh, flavor. So this is the dish that is gonna be uh, for this evening. And one more time, if you need any explication whatsoever, please get in touch with Brand Plus TV and they will get in touch with me and we will invite you uh, for a tour in the kitchen and we will invite you uh, for maybe a couple of hours with us in the kitchen so we can show you how we do it and why we, we combine things together, okay? So, uh, Okay, um, you are gonna taste, uh, gonna taste because you can smell. I smell. I am gonna give you a uh, 
I'm allergic to this fish, so I cannot uh, taste it, but I am glad that my wife is here so she can taste and tell us how, uh, you know, uh, allergy is uh, very important uh, to me. Um, here at the Fairview, we do everything. When it comes to allergy, when it comes to people that are allergic to a certain products, I do the extra miles, I go the extra miles be, uh, to help them because I have allergies also. So it's for me very, very important that people, when they come to us, that I take care, good care of them too, uh, even when they have an allergy. So, uh, hmm. is it an, yeah. <laughs> but now we need somebody else. So John, can I please invite you to uh, come and taste? John is uh, one of the sommeliers of the Pango restaurant, one of the talents I met here in uh, Kenya. So uh, while chef is not able to taste, if this is the right match, please. So See and, if... uh, John, <clears throat> uh, you will tell us a little bit what you uh, think of it. Eh? You're giving him my wine. I'm so sorry. Give me your wine. Oh, no. I didn't know that you were drinking, zipping it. So, so what we did here is, because of the first dish, I, I said, okay, we do the Sauvignon Blanc Premium. It was not the best match, so we took the reserve, which I had in mind for this dish. But John can say what he thinks about this match with this... Uh, so this is the, we, we basically swap the wines around and see if it's yeah. a match. So you see uh, what John is doing, he's tasting the wine first, tasting the, uh, the, 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 the dish, uh, the tarbots, and then now he's tasting it with the wine. The Sauvignon Blanc and then the table. The soup the, the sea salt. Mm. And then the Sauvignon Blanc and then really combine it. Um, it's harmony as well. Mm. It, with it, each other. Yeah. So yeah. you're able to, to enjoy the wine, the sauce, and the table yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. You, you feel that they are. It's a marriage, it's a combi in combination, a beautiful combination. Very, very, uh, what I added is, is the sea salt with just a little bit um, um, of chili. So you see, uh, if the camera is here, see we created the sea salt with some chilies in it. So it's very, very, you know, at home you can do so much, so much to add flavors to your dish. So what we did, we created the sea salt with a little bit um, um, chilies in it and we kept it for about 48 hours so the, the chili uh, seeds are going to give that uh, spice, spiciness to the, to the salt and then you add the salt to this beautiful fish. This beautiful fish is a purity, it's beautiful, it's pure. And anything that you add to it, you add beauty to this fish. We added saffron. We added beurre aromatique, injected beurre aromatique with it. Uh, garden peas with it. Sea salt with chilies. It's just the sky is the limit. Yes? <laughs> okay. We are on it. So the poached tarbot, pour, uh, poached tarbot with the Reserve Sauvignon Blanc. No, with the premium Sauvignon. Sauvignon. We yes, switch. We eh? switched it around. Now we will go to a garlic uh, in garlic butter pan fried, 21 days aged ribeye. Now, what are we gonna do with the ribeye? Uh, we will take a small break and then we'll bring you something that you can do at home also. I will show you how to smoke 
with the smoker and I will show you how to pan fry also. We will uh, pan fry the, uh, the, 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 uh, the ribeye. It's a 21 days aged ribeye. And in the last uh, uh, one of the episodes we had, we showed you the, the aging, uh, the aging uh, process and how the meat marbles in the in the meat in the uh, how the fat marbles in the meat so we will show you everything now and we'll take a smoke break small break and i will see you in a minute thank you very much and yes we'll see you okay so Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to a Chef's Platter, another uh, beautiful uh, Chef's Platter. We, uh, for our new, uh, of, uh, the uh, viewers that just uh, joined us uh, this evening, we are making a seven-course menu with a pairing of seven different wines from the Fergelig estate from uh, South Africa. Um, I'm joined by uh, the uh, importer, actually, uh, of the Fergelig. Uh, Schauke, why did you choose this wine to import here to Kenya? So why this wine? So I came to Kenya three years ago, as you know, right? Yeah. So one of the first things, so I, I enjoy the good life. I like good food and I like good wines <laughs> and uh, you also can see that. But um, no, I, my main business is, is lighting. So I sell basically lamps like you have a lot here today. Yeah. Uh, but the good life in Kenya Apart from the location, the weather, the wildlife, yeah. it was not there because the wine was lacking. And uh, why Vergelegen? Uh, uh, so I basically decided to import my own wine because I would like to have a top wine. To drink a good To drink wine. myself, <laughs> That's really right? Nice. And to make that wine also available to a wider audience in Kenya. So first I, I selected the estate and the estate is Vergelegen. And Vergelegen is really one of the top wine estates of South Africa. I think it's a top 10 estate yeah. and it's also one of the most beautiful ones. So choosing Vergelegen was in the end uh, uh, quite easy. But then my second mission uh, uh, with importing my own wines uh, was to make it available to a wider audience. So wines here are normally quite expensive, Six, right? Yeah. Especially Absolutely. very good yeah. wines are quite expensive. Uh, so since I earn my money with selling lighting, uh, I'm able to keep yeah, the margins, uh, because you need to make some money, low on these wines. And because of that, uh, these wines are available in yeah, top restaurants like the Pango restaurant at quite an attractive price. And I think uh, uh, that's the reason why I started this whole wine business. So it's really out it. of personal frustration. <laughs> yes. Personal frustration. Yes. You started it as a hobby and now you are, um, you know, this wine is making its 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 um, way into the uh, to the Kenyan market as one of the best wines, and I am really uh, I was very happy when I met uh, uh, Schalke and he was talking to me about the wines and talking to me about what is lacking in in Kenya and yeah one of the things that is lacking in Kenya was a good wine. So that's what, uh, why we decided also this evening to uh, pair these wines with my food. Uh, now, uh, this evening we have also a wide audience because we are inviting a lot of people and in uh, working together with, with uh, Brand Plus TV, we are going to uh, uh, take you this evening to a beautiful wine pairing with... Uh, a wider audience and then we will ask the audience also what do they think about the wine pairing what do they think about this beautiful food and what does the wine bring back to the food 
and that's where Jeanette here is gonna tell us about Jeanette you know tasting this wine and tasting the food now today this evening what do you think that our audience this evening will think about this beautiful uh, uh, pairing I think they will be very happy because I'm very happy and uh, I think one of the things that wine should do is make you happy that's the criterion I always think when I drink something do I want the other glass does it make me happy and uh, with the next course um, the 21 days aged uh, ripeye lightly smokes we um, decided to try first the uh, reserve Merlot and Merlot is normally a grape which is uh, added to a wine with in, in a combination with Cabernet Sauvignon to make it easier to yeah, to yeah. bring some some fruit in and some juiciness and and when I taste this for the first time and although it's a 2012 so it's five years old um, I was quite surprised about the strength this wine has and then when I read how this wine is made with seven weeks of skin contact that means skin t in all the tannins are in the stems and in the skin so if you put these grapes with in skin contact um, the, the the tannins of the skin will will resolve into the the grapes because they will be a little bit uh, uh, squeezed so th there they is a rise. little they will rise as, as, as a flavor as a, yes yes it will the, the the skin will will also release all the 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 flavors into the juice if you press a wine they are uh, cut loose of the of the skin and now they first have seven weeks just staying there and then the the uh, fermentation uh, macération ferm fermentation will come so the apple uh, acids will transform into milky acids so uh, that gives a little bit of a of, of a milky flavor and then they added two different yeasts, what we talked about. So, uh, two different yeasts that, that do the fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation. So this is a, a pretty, pretty strong wine Robert. for a Merlot. Yeah. And then they added 9% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and 5% Petit Verdot. So 9% Cabernet Sauvignon for the structure and 5% Petit Verdot for, for the, um, yeah, the, Spicy flavors, petit petit and verdot. The petit verdot, Jeanette, is that a a, a typical uh, uh, thing for South Africa, or is it? Everywhere? It's not. No, it's not a typical thing for South Africa. It's a typical thing for uh, Bordeaux, but that comes okay. back to Rothschild. So Rothschild uh, has has implemented the whole Bordeaux. Um, so it's the philosophy. Roots. The, roots the roots are the starting actually in yeah. the Bordeaux region in France, and then brought back to to the uh, to the South African uh, uh, wine tradition, yes. which is very very uh, unique. The way they uh, follow through yeah. uh, this whole process, looking at the the soil and looking at. Uh, all their vineyards and the microclimates, it's a very um, French orientated uh, wine estate. So uh, it always go back to France if, you, if I... Always, <laughs> I don't want to say that, he's half French. So uh, yes, we all, the, the basics of, of, of good winemaking, we come back to France, yes, when it comes to Rothschild. So uh, what is uh, important, what we're saying this evening is uh, still that wine pairing wine flavors and wine and and the food flavors now what we are gonna do now is uh, I am gonna show you a little trick for home you know because smoking the meat is not a professional chef's thing you can do it at home also so I'm gonna ask for the smoker this is what something that I bought from uh, Europe but you can make it at home if you're a little bit handy if you have an old pot, actually, uh, that you are not using anymore to cook, and it doesn't matter if it's 
uh, rectangular or, 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 or uh, circle, it doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna show you is, this is the smoker. So what we have here is a, a small grill where we put the meat and then we are here something that underneath we put, whoop, we put the wood chips. So if you have a, a, an old uh, pot, cooking pot at home, you can make something like this and then you can smoke your own meat or your own sausages. So what we did is we, we put the, the meat here and uh, we smoked it a little bit and then we pan fried it in garlic butter. Now what is garlic butter? Bar uh, garlic butter is butter, 100% butter, not margarine. Uh, garlic with it and then we put some thyme uh, herbs in it to give the flavors to the to the butter now to make the plate of course as a professional chef it's to think about the colors okay so what I'm doing is I have a, a root uh, vegetable uh, which I'm gonna give it a little bit color this is a, a natural uh, cocoa butter with color. And I'm gonna just give it a little bit color. I want to, you know, because I have, the, the plate is black, so I want to give it a small background, okay? So small background is playing with colors. And then we will add some vegetables. This is a carrot, and a carrot, you can just cook it and make something out of it. But I really love to play with food. Play with food as a professional chef is always something. This is a courgette. So we're going to put it in here and give it, you see how you create things together. Roots, again, earth, okay? And I made some roasted garlic. Now, why roasted garlic? Because garlic is bitter. Huh? The, 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 when you just take garlic like this, it's bitter. When you roast it, you actually, it's a chemical, natural chemical uh, thing that happens in the garlic. It starts to give the sweet, sweetness. Huh? So if you eat this now, it's sweet. But when you eat garlic, also you smell. So you, when you roast the garlic, you don't smell garlic. It's very, very, uh, we are talking about food and we're talking about science. It's always about what you do. If you blanch the garlic, blanching the garlic also in water five times. So we were sometimes, and, and I told the guys how to do it, uh, five small pans with water. And then I blanch the garlic in the first cooking boiling water, one minute. The second cooking of uh, boiling water, two minutes. The third, three minutes. The fourth, four minutes. The fifth, five minutes. And you take it out, then is your garlic just as sweet as it comes. Very, very sweet. And you don't smell uh, the garlic when you are talking to somebody. So this is our base, okay? And then we're gonna work the plate a little bit with purees. Now I made some, uh, we made some cauliflower puree. For the sweetness again. I have some carrot puree and the carrot puree actually I'm gonna just put it here. and give it a twist with a comb. Okay, so just working with your plates and you know, to make a beautiful plate, people see the plate first before they eat. So if your plate is not presentable and it's not beautiful, people are not gonna eat it because it looks already, ah, I don't want, so they're not gonna start. So if you put something beautiful on that plate, 
they are going to start eating because the view, the eyes, are in uh, contact with the mouth, huh? with the taste. So if the eyes says yes, then the mouth says yes, huh? isn't it? So this is what uh, uh, the plate is going to look like. And then we will have the, the meat. Like I said, it's, the meat is lightly smoked and then it's in garlic butter uh, cooked of uh, pan fried. This is the meat. So to present it a little bit better, I am going to cut it in a way that is also representable. So I'm going to cut the fat Of course, at home, you want to eat everything. But as a professional chef, uh, you have to present it a little bit better. And this is a seven-course menu, guys. So don't forget that to put the, the portions a little bit smaller. Otherwise, you're going be, be, to be full at the third or the fourth course, and you're not going to be able to eat the rest. And with that, we did a porcini mushroom sauce. Why? I was talking about earths. I was talking about uh, things as natural as it comes. And believe me, a lot of, uh, of, of chefs in Europe would say, no, I'm not coming to Kenya because there is nothing to, to find in Kenya. But this beautiful land and this beautiful country is blessed with everything that you plant in this soil. You get it, okay? So all the vegetables are here. Everything is here, the mushrooms, the porcini mushroom. Porcini mushroom is supposed to be from Italy, but we can get it here in Kenya. Okay, so everything is, uh, 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 yeah, uh, you can get in Kenya. So, uh, so we made the porcini mushroom, and if you smell this, uh, Jeanette, if you smell this, you will see the earthy, uh, the, the earthiness and, 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 and uh, our director here, come and smell this please and tell me what you think. So this is a dried porcini mushroom and the sauce. Okay, so smell this and smell the wine together and you will see a resemblance of the earthiness of the, the, the purity of this, yeah, of this purity. Yeah. Uh, sommelier, John, uh, please let me see and tell me what you think. Just smell the porcini mushrooms, dried porcini mushrooms, and smell the wine. Then we're gonna add this beautiful sauce. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you one thing is that it's going to be one of the most beautiful uh, uh, combinations that we will have this evening. Uh, I am adding a small potato gratin, which is potato and cheese, all cheese, uh, to the whole combination. So you can see that when you take this, 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 and this together, you have a beautiful marriage. Marriage. So, please, Schalke, do us the... Uh, it's always great to see experts work and talk about all the great stuff. And then I can taste the end result. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'm very, very curious, uh, Schauke, to what you think uh, this combination would be. And uh, like uh, Jeanette said in the, uh, at the uh, first of this um, uh, mission, or this beautiful uh, chef's platter, uh, sauce is very, very important to make a beautiful combination with wine and food. So uh, Jeanette. Absolutely delicious, Chef. Thank you. 
So when you are uh, roasting the garlic, you will see that you can make a puree out of it. Huh? You can serve it as, as, as a whole, or you can just do this and squeeze the, the puree out of the garlic. And I am gonna ask our director and our sommelier at Pango to join us to taste this beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Please, join us. Mm -hmm. Join us. What a beautiful combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Even the, the that garlic just make it yes. huh? the garlic make it also so uh, 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 it brings it together actually. In my second life I don't want to be a cameraman because the cameraman don't uh, don't uh, taste anything, eh? <laughs> well, we'll get you guys. We'll get you hooked. I think also you're the one working tonight, right? <laughs> We're the one people enjoying you it. You are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a life, uh, a chef's life. Yeah, so, but I got the opportunity to um, to taste uh, this actually, because you know we put we put the whole menu together and we put. Uh, uh, the wine uh, together, but just because of uh, um, having experience. But uh, as you see, out of the, the five uh, wines that we choose, we only had to move one, one. one wine. Yeah. So four out of five. Yeah, it's think, beautiful. They're able to complement each other. Yeah. Mm. The sauce, the ribeye. The dancer of the ribeye, the potato, mm. yeah, very nice, uh, beautifully complementing each other. Absolutely, absolutely a beautiful combination and a beautiful dish and a beautiful wine. So uh, we will uh, be taking you to the sixth um, uh, dish uh, this evening, which is, um, we choose for cheese. Now I know that lots of... Um, People have the cheese a little bit, you know, they don't have lots of cheeses at home. But I would like to encourage you to, when you have people at home, when you have your family, your loved ones at home, when you have a, um, a birthday or a wedding or something, get the cheese. Cheese is very important because it has... The French do it always because it has a digestive uh, effect on your stomach. And certainly when you have five or six or seven course menus, that cheese is going to open up, your, is going to digest whatever you, you have eaten before, and then it's going to open up the, the, the way to go to the desserts. So we're going to show you a couple of cheeses that you can uh, use at home. Kenyan made cheeses. Yes. Brown yeah. Cheese. In Limuru, brown cheese. It's 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 beautiful cheeses and we're gonna show you how to combine that also with the wines. With the wine. So let's do that. Oh, so cheese. let's toast and let's have the uh, the cheeses after the break. And I hope you stay with us uh, to look at this <coughs> beautiful menu. And don't forget this evening we're gonna have <coughs> an audience, an audience with uh, uh, about 30 or 40 people that will come, and we will have a little bit feedback from the from our guests and of how we did this whole menu. Thank you very much. I will see you in a couple of minutes.
Good evening. Welcome back to Chef's Platter. Um, we're going to the sixth course, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And uh, Chef has been talking about uh, uh, cheese, how it digests your stomach. And you have the most beautiful cheeses in Kenya. Uh, from the hand of Dahlia, uh, Brown's cheese in Limuru. And we have a cheese platter of uh, Brown's here. We start with uh, the brie, and then we have a very nice goat cheese. We have um, blue a blue stilton, made in the, in the typical English way. And then we have a Limuru uh, cheddar. cheddar. Uh, no, cheddar Jeanette, is American, isn't it? Uh, no, yeah. cheddar is English, actually. English. It's British, very, British. very British. Okay. okay, Americans don't make cheeses while well, they're making cheeses now. But uh, it's a typically British uh, cheese. Now we're talking about the blue cheese. Blue cheese, what is a blue cheese, Jeanette? What, what had happened to get a blue cheese from the cow or from the... Uh, normally they um. inject the floras and um, it's, um, it's, it's a process. Um, when you talk about cheese and cheese making, it doesn't really make you happy because you, you talk a lot about fungs. Fungs, uh, and we relate as a human being, fungs as to be disgusting, but we need fungs to uh, create cheese. So fungs are uh, all about uh, over the cheese and in the cheese. So if you talk about that, uh, some people say, oh, no, but we as Europeans, we are more uh, adjusted and as Dutch people especially, we love cheese. So um, we talk about in a, in a very nice way, not about fungs, but we talk about floras. So we have white flora cheeses like the, the, the brie and the goat cheese, and then we have the blue uh, cheeses, which the, most of the cheeses, uh, the floras are injected into the cheese, just like Chef just presented to, to just put it into the fish. Well, one, one very important thing, you know, that the blue cheese of the flora cheese or the funks cheese was an accident, actually. Uh, in the 16th century, uh, one of the... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, pastors because they were in France they were making cheeses in um, uh, as a church okay mm -hmm. and they put it in in caves they put the cheese in caves because the caves were a little bit more uh, colder than uh, than put the cheese outside to, to ripe and in the cave there were some fungus mm -hmm. and that's how it caught it caught to the cheese and it was a a, something that the, the nuns and the, the pastors never saw before. So they started looking at the, 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 the reaction with the cheese and the fungus that was in the cave. And they were eating it. And, and, and they found out that it was actually adding a lot of flavor to the, to the cheese. So everything good comes from the church. <laughs> cheese, beer, wine, yeah, everything absolutely. from the so. French churches. So that's a good thing to know. Yeah. So, uh, and what do we have here? We um, tried all these cheeses with, uh, with the wines from, uh, again from Vergelegen. Uh, the etiquette says Cabernet Merlot, but it's a typical Bordeaux blend. So also Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc and Malbec are added, but the, the etiquette doesn't say that. So um, let's dig in. So normally we, we presented the, the cheese platter and you, you can uh, choose to eat the floras, but you don't have to. Um, and then you go from one side to the other. If you are in a good restaurant, they know how to put the cheeses well, on uh, the plate. Normally, uh, to start with the cheeses, you want to start with, uh, with the softer cheeses to the hard cheeses, but also with the less flavored cheeses to the most flavored okay. cheeses. Yeah. So we're gonna start with the brie, and then we're gonna go to the goat cheese, we're gonna go to the blue cheese, and then the most hard cheese is the cheddar, the Limuru cheddar. And then we combine it with the sweet onion marmalade. 
Uh, so we, we made the marmalade with sweet onions, uh, cook it really very, very, uh, for about two hours. Uh, that to make the, uh, the onions uh, very soft, but also that add the sweetness of the onions to the, uh, to the, to the marmalade. What are these golden stripes? Uh, this is balsamic vinegar. I like balsamic vinegar with the... I don't eat the flour. Uh, with, uh, with the cheese. Uh, so this is a balsam one of the bals uh, the yellow is with the uh, uh, balsamic vinegar and uh, and uh, um, uh, mango. mango and then the other one is just a reduction of uh, balsamic vinegar And especially in Europe, lots of people think that port wine, very sweet and heavy wines, are the best combination with cheese. But it really depends because the really good combinations are not with a very heavy wine that's alcoholic and very sweet that would really just smash this brie or this goat cheese. So red wine is the best, best combination and you have very beautiful sherry wines that really match. All sherry wines also, yes. a little bit, uh, yeah. So um, I think that the combination with the, the sweet onion, the marmalade, uh, would make uh, this wine a little bit coming up. Eh? Don't you think? Sweetness yeah. makes the combination. Uh, yeah. Now, very. I am really very very excited about this. The blue, the blue stilton. Yeah. Shall we try the blue it cheese. Beautiful, but is it going to match the wine? Who knows? Yeah. I like it better than with the brie. Yeah, because it makes the palate is wide. Yeah, yeah. Because the brie is giving a uh, a little like film layer in your mouth mm. whilst the wine is going to be more one-dimensional and this is a drier cheese with more flavor mm. and it really picks up the flavors absolutely very, very, absolutely uh, <clears throat> I'm happy because don't forget uh, ladies and gentlemen we are dealing now with one wine four different cheeses absolutely different Huh? How they are made, how they are uh, uh, ripe, how they are stored. Because huh? for the you know for the floras they need a special storage for them, special temperature, and then one single wine that have different uh, uh, grapes in them, in it, and it matches. It really matches. Three out of the four. Now we're gonna. I already did. But I think that also the that onion marmalade is making it. Um, onion marmalade is a bridge to the wine. But if you if you have a wine that really doesn't suit cheese, no onion. A whole jar of onion marmalade won't make won't, up won't to make it. Won't make the the difference. So this is really. Um, a beautiful combination and um, you know and it's like I said it's very difficult you have four different cheeses that are made four different ways is way and yet it is matching but you know what mm. I sent Dahlia one bottle ah, okay so and she she chooses the one the, the, the cheese. cheeses yeah. Absolutely so, marvelous. Thank you, Dahlia, for Marvel. making us a beautiful cheese platter. Yeah. 
Marvelous, marvelous. I am very happy. This is, uh, like I said, cheese makes your stomach digest better because of the enzymes of the of the of the of the uh, milk where you know the cheese is coming from, the procedure where the cheese is uh, made. So it's a lots of of things that are combined together that make. And you know what? A lots of people think that when you come to a restaurant. For example, here, our journey starts every day at 7 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning. Some of my chefs come here at 5.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning to start. I am mostly here at 8 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. And then when people come to eat eh, in our restaurant in, in, in Amsterdam, well, people will come at 7 or at 8 in the evening to eat. But don't forget, the guys, that we are already working about 12 hours to make it happen before you even come into the restaurant. Huh? Yeah. So we, you know, our journey starts very early in the morning to make all the mise en place, all the prep. And then when somebody comes at 7 in, in, in the evening to eat, we have already 11 or 12 hours behind us. And then we start cooking, we start executing, we start giving you that beautiful plate that you want. So it's pretty uh, busy life, being a chef or being a sommelier or being a restaurateur. Eh? Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to this magnificent, I call it magnificent because it's really a beautiful uh, addition to you this evening. About seven course menu, seven different wines, wine pairing, food pairing, uh, lots of information that we have given you this evening. And I hope that uh, you are learning a little bit from this because we're doing this really because of you, because we want you to learn. We want you to enjoy your dinners at home, your dinners with friends, your dinners with family. We want you to combine things uh, from scratch. We want you to make things and to be proud of yourself when you are serving some uh, food and a wine combination together. Now, we are on the seventh course uh, uh, this evening, the last course, what we will uh, show you, the last plate. And I choose this plate because of the combinations together, you know. Uh, chocolate. Chocolate is something very, very beautiful. Chocolate. How does chocolate, where does chocolate come from? Cacao beans, fermentation, dry the cacao beans after the fermentation and then make the chocolate bars, okay? And that's something that we will cover next time or in a couple of uh, weeks, I will talk to you about chocolates and I will talk to you about how the chocolate is made. Uh, <clears throat> but believe me, it's a whole um, operation before you go to Nakumart or to whatever um, uh, um, uh, shop you go to buy that Mars or that whatever chocolate you buy. There is a whole uh, science behind it how to make the chocolates. Eh? We have been talking to one of the best chocolate makers in the world, uh, a French guy, a French friend of ours that we know for years and years, and we learned about chocolate. And the farmers that make chocolate, uh, how they make it and how they... But this is a beautiful episode, actually, if we can do that uh, with uh, you and I. Uh, combining chocolate with wines also, which is a very beautiful thing to do sometimes. Just an idea, okay? 
so what we made is the last course is going to be haz hazelnut and more, uh, morello cherries uh, milk triology triology and milk triology what is that is combining the chocolates together the white chocolates the dark chocolates and the milk chocolates okay so when we go to a supermarket and we buy chocolates we have preferences white milky and dark but now what i did is i mixed the three together to create a trilogy between all those chocolates okay and then we did it also with some raspberries from naivasha uh, and the dark chocolate on the top and the white chocolate here so the raspberries come back again on the on the plates and the raspberries come back again or with the sauce and then the hazelnuts can come back also on the plate so let's uh, try it and uh, mm -hmm. so which wine are you serving we're you? serving the dna oh my dna i uh, not your dna uh, the dna you know what is dna dna is the structure it's, it says everything about you, who you are and everything you've got in yourself so uh, um, yeah so this is their vergelegen DNA and what I was very very nicely surprised with is that the major part of this wine is Cabernet Franc which I absolutely love um, and Cabernet Sauvignon and Petit Verdot so um, it's got of all these wines the most rest uh, sugar so like 3.7 grams a liter uh, there's the most sugar left in the wines uh, whilst we have this feeling that we have to serve a sweet wine with a dessert so this is also the most tricky one to combine to combine because we don't have anything left so please Let's try it. You're the judge. And the exec executioner. <laughs> Prosecutor. <laughs> so what we did here, and you can see this, is a, um, a cake and a sponge from uh, hazelnuts so, and chocolates. You see the structure here. Very, very beautiful, the structure in the hazelnut with the hazelnuts and the chocolates we made a mousse out of the triology like i said the jelly of raspberries and the hazelnut what's this this is a chocolate mousse also white chocolate So I'm giving, I'm gonna give it the time because this is a dessert. So I'm gonna give it the time just to melt in my mouth. The chocolates, hazelnuts, and the coup de foudre, we call it in France. And it, it matches, so yes, I am taste it because if you put a sweet wine with it now it's gonna kill the chocolate it's a pretty cool combination It's a pretty cool combination. Uh, John, come and see it. Come and see this. Rector, come and see this. It is a pretty cool combination because I was to tell you the truth because through my career, I have always combined chocolate with sherry, Pedro Ximenez, 
uh, old cherries, eh? old uh, sweet wines, the the the, the Montbazillac, the, the the you know, Sauternes. the Sauternes wines. And I have never ever thought that a, a, a red wine like this could actually survive the chocolate because it's about surviving. Eh? It's about how do you combine something and something comes through together. So it's about is the chocolate going to survive this very, very heavy wine? And it does. It does. Please. Me too. Me too. <laughs> And this is when I'm gonna ask the camera uh, people, because they have been with us for the last five, six hours, gonna ask them actually to come for and taste also this beautiful, beautiful combination. So, uh, eh? Match it, huh? Come, guys. Come on, Moses. Come on. They deserve it. And I think that uh, we have been talking this evening about uh, lots of combinations, uh, lots of things that we are doing. And I hope really that uh, you um, folks have learned something about this, uh, this, this episode this evening. And I hope that uh, um, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to be um, involved with uh, Brand Plus TV and me, uh, please send us a Facebook or on our Twitter um, account and uh, we will get in touch with you through um, Brand Plus TV and we will invite you to the Fairview Hotel and we will show you how we uh, we are um, um, uh, planning this menus, how we are executing this, how we are preparing these menus and executing these menus. So please uh, let us know. And thank you very much for a beautiful episode. And watch for the cellar. The cellar is coming. It's going to be very, very innovative. It's going to be very informative. You're gonna learn lots of things from uh, uh, Jeanette uh, about the wines and about um, uh, the different uh, grapes and the different met methods of uh, making the wines. Eh? different areas, but we start with South Africa. Okay, so ciao ciao. We'll Thank see you. you. Whitney Nasanga, CEO of El Afrique. And anyone who knows me is, knows that I live to eat. I don't eat to live. And I am absolutely in love with wine. The wine and food pairing right now is going fantabulous, to say the least. So the Chardonnay happens to be so far my best since we're just in the third course going on. And yes, the whole like ambience of the place and the brele. I, guys, I don't really know how to say that, but it's a really nice South African wine that they're serving today. It's really delicious and it's a must-have. Yes, I did have really high expectations as anything else. You know, the dinner being 9-5, your expectations are totally stealing and beyond. And I'm very happy that they actually happened to surpass everything that I expected. So yes, I'm enjoying myself. We're all enjoying ourselves. My name is Rulof Assis. I'm the general manager of Philips East Africa. And... Uh, I'm here at Fairview Hotel. Now, I think this is a great opportunity to uh, experience great food uh, prepared by uh, Chef Moshin over here from the Fairview Hotel together with Vergelegen wine from South Africa imported by the Fries Consulting. Really a fantastic uh, combination from premium food with premium wines. And I think there's a great opportunity for us to uh, experience that. Now, and generally, I think it's, uh, it's good to, uh, to have great food as well. 
And to pair that with the fantastic uh, wines, I think, this, this is not often very easily done in Kenya as well. So we can find a lot of good food and kind of things. We can also find good wines as well. But the combination of actually pairing those two together, I think is a u unique combination. So we love it, yes. The most favorite pairing, I, I love spicy wines. So my wine over here was a Shiraz, the Vergele Shiraz, which is one of, one, one of my favorites. Uh, for one of the foods because I really like the spicy wines. The one of the other one as well, the, the Chardonnay Reserve, a really a great, great wine as well. And I think this is, uh, this is a great opportunity to taste great wines. Yeah. Um, I'm Irene Ouso from Eat Out Kenya. I love food, I love wine. I love the combination, I love the pairing. It's um, what creates an experience for me. And I like the fact that food and wine can go together as an the different tastes, the different notes, goes with different foods, I love it. Um, I love the fact that we, they have um, introduced to Dutch wine and uh, also that I get to taste the chef's um, passion because he has a passion for food and he's an artist. So I love the fact I'm combining all those together. So far, um, the presentation has been amazing. It's just that um, I get awed by each time he presents something, it's just a work of art for me. My name is Alexander Helfritz. I am the sales and marketing director of DT Dobi, one of the oldest uh, car uh, dealers in Kenya. Actually, on some places you will get quite good food, some places definitely not, but I'm quite happy with the Fairview because this is one of the best places where you can have your dinner. Today um, we are invited for a seven course dinner with seven different kind of wines coming from South Africa and uh, actually the most of the combination are perfect and my favorite was definitely the smoked tomato consume uh, with uh, premium Chardonnay and it was lovely. I think Changing food would be difficult. Of course, we are in Kenya, there are different places, uh, and of course, even different cooks coming from outside or coming even from Kenya. Um, at the end, it's quite nice, but at the Fairview, you will have a very, very special chef uh, who has experience from around the world, which is very special. I like definitely very much the South African wines. Um, but of course, I'm European, as you know, or you can see, and uh, I like even German wine and French wine. But at the end, and, uh, the wine from South Africa gives you a quite good combination from all of them.